Hey, Legends, welcome back to the Mason Cox Show. Big episode, yes, finals are finally here. And we're going to do something totally unique, different layout to the podcast today, but it's going to be a good one, I promise you. We're going to give a bit of a review of the year, the best teams, and and let's be honest, some of the teams that didn't impress so much, and plenty, plenty more. And obviously, we'll preview the finals games for the week. So there's going to be plenty in this one. So settle in, and let's get into it. All right, Legends, let's get straight into it. Lots to cover here. Welcome, Brayden. G'day, Mason Cox. Mm. Live and in the flesh. It's good to have you back in Melbourne. We missed you. Uh, now, off the top, you did say we're going to we're gonna shake things up a little. Do a little bit. Chew the fat, as they say. Yeah, because chew the fat. Because there's no games to review, <laughs> and thank God. So we're out of the home and away season. We're into the real stuff now. Uh, so we thought we'd have a look back at Ooh. the season that was. A review and a preview. Yeah, and, and revisit some of the things that might have shocked us mm. and uh, some things that disappointed us and the whole roller coaster range of emotions. But let's jump into it because I want to start off with, I want to get yours first, a <laughs> team that surprised you. So coming into the season, we all have expectations. Yeah. Some teams meet them, some teams don't. What team surprised you? Now, calling fans probably hate this, but Carlton was up there. I think we all remember back to like round six or seven or eight or nine, wherever it is. And no one had any belief in them whatsoever. Their goal kicking was completely off. They were losing games left, right, and center. And everyone thought Carlton's done. It They're was like, a glorious time. It was, <laughs> it was a wild time for calling supporters. But Carlton was in the depths, right? There was all the fans screaming and chaos and everything else. And what do you know? They finished fifth. And everyone's sitting there going, oh, I probably should have shut up and waited for the, <laughs> the season to finish. So I think Carlton's going to be the team that surprised me after being able to turn things around mid midway through the year. And what they've been able to do to get the fifth on the ladder is quite impressive. The booing. We, mm. we talked about the booing. Talked about it with the dogs, yeah. And uh, don't boo. Booing's bad. But. You could argue that the booing was the catalyst that turned everything around for him, Mace. No, we're and not going to Got say them that, heading up the ladder. We're not saying that. We're not going with that. Everyone, do not listen well, to Well, they started booing and then they started playing well. No. So if you put, you know, two and two no, together. What happens, they sat down and had beers together in a circle, you know, and sang Kumbaya, I think. That's what essentially happened. Then things turned around. Yeah, see, they got a little fragile. Same, same, they, different. They fixed it. So, who, who do you have? Who's your team? Uh, I had St. Kilda and I was yeah. super bullish almost to the point of like smug arrogance to all my St. Kilda friends, like supporters, that I I thought they were in for like a world of hurt oh. and for a sustained period of time. Because yeah. I thought, you know, those teams that peak early to like try and get in their window, don't quite make it. And there's just teams better than them. And then they kind of have to go back down and start mm. all over again. I thought St. Kilda was kind of in that kind of range. Like I didn't think that they had the stars required to like make a massive impact, but I, I still don't think they probably have the stars required. A lot of mid players have been playing really well, Yeah. but with Ross Lyon, I don't think you really need the star players. You just like pressure, defense, consistency, you know what you're going to get. And it's, there's been a few times like during the mid season where it's like, oh, okay, here comes the slide. Yeah. Here comes the slide. And it just never came. They no. like finished well inside the eight and looking pretty good, like consistent. They lost to Brisbane in the last round without Max King at the Gabba, but were competitive the whole time. Yeah. Like not a lot of teams have been doing that. And I think they lost two of their last six. So they're one of the informed teams going into finals. Uh, so yeah, I have to eat some humble pie with that Wee. one. It's uh, they've been very good. I, I find it interesting because they're not, I guess, like a headline team, right? Yeah. St Kilda is not one of those that I guess you look at the Herald Sun or whatever it is, and they're back page very often. So I think they've somewhat flown under the radar, even though they are in the top eight and they've been going really well. For some reason, I still feel like they haven't, you know, they haven't had like big controversies there. They haven't had anything kind of happen. They just kind of, you know, floated them through and now they're top eight and they're going uh, straight into finals. And it's it's a weird feeling to and sit I, there and look at St. Kilda and think, yep, they're sitting on a ladder up there. They look competitive. They mm -hmm. When they play that like spitfire footy, so they've obviously got their defense down pat and like yeah. their choking team, number one defensive team in the comp for score against. Yeah, I think that they can now start to drag in some players over the trade period 
Yeah. And then start to get the score on the board because they've got the defense. If they can just get the score on the board, dangerous team already. So true. Max King out for a little bit chunk of the season two. So maybe that was a little reason they were down. So we'll go into the next bit though and go from the positive side of things to the negative side of things. Braden, now what team was underperforming or disappointed you during the season? I feel like there's only one real team here, and it's Fremantle Dockers. Oh, they go. were, you know, touted to just keep rising up and they were already impressive last year made the finals a lot of young like guns coming through there new midfielders like yeah. sarong obviously killing it they got luke jackson like, sean darcy yeah, all they these got, boys there they got a heap of talent out there and just massively underperformed they've come home with a bit of a bit of a run but yeah. as a freo supporter that's almost more frustrating because it's like what a waste of a season. Yeah, there's nothing worse than you get to the end of a year. And I know footballers and teams and clubs and all that want to spin that bullshit that there's no such thing as a wasted season. Yeah. But boy, oh boy, when you you expected to do something and then you just came out just flat as a tack and it took you the best part of 18 rounds to start getting up and going. Yeah, I reckon so many disappointed fans this year because – Expectation. Expectation is the root of all disappointment. Mm. But yeah, I just feel like they should have done more. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they obviously got into the semi final last year and then losing to us. And you would have high expectations going into the year because they played so well last year. Um, and then a few different trades. You said Luke Jackson coming in, trying to figure out where he fits in with Sean Darcy and Jago Amira. Yeah. Amira going over there too. Like there's been a few things at the beginning of the season they needed to figure out. Like I remember at the beginning of the year, Jackson had all the media around him and how he was playing and everything else. And he kind of got his, uh, got his legs underneath him, understood his role and then started playing a bit better and credit to him. But yeah, it's, it's one of those things. I feel like that had quite a few changes over the off season and um, everyone, whenever you finish in a semifinal and finish in the top eight, if you don't finish in the top eight in the next year, everyone uses that word disappointment or, you know, like a season that was quote unquote wasted. I don't think it was wasted to be honest. I think they're building something special over there. And um, yeah, Fremantle is going to be a team. I think next year will be a lot better and probably people realize this year. Yeah, and it is because of that. Like, it takes time. Like, Luke Jackson, they were riding off. I was looking back at, like, round three, round yeah, four. crazy. Like, give him a freaking second. He's Dude, a kid. Just um, on. And he's he's been uh, really improved. So who is your biggest disappointment? I've got, like, two here. Now, it's not like a disappointment. It's more of just, like, I thought they'd go better, but they didn't. Um, first one, Essendon. I think we all probably could have seen that coming. Um, I was kind of thinking maybe this is the year they make finals. You know, there's a bit of hype around them preseason. Um, unfortunately, kind of fell off towards the back end. And then the other one's Geelong. Yeah. Geelong, who's the premiers, didn't even make the top eight this year. Like, I think a lot of people probably would have had them in their top eight for the end of the year. And now they're sitting there on off season doing their, uh, you know, their Mad Monday so early. So that was one that was kind of uh, astonishing to me going back and looking at the whole year. If I would have picked, you know, top eight teams, Geelong definitely would have been in the top eight. And for them not to, to finish there was a surprise for me. I think a surprise for a lot of people out there. Yeah, I think Essendon was my like in season disappointment because mm -hmm. like I didn't have any expectations for them. Like I'd, to be honest, like I didn't even really care about like <laughs> some of those teams that were just like, you know, when you know that they're just going to finish down there, they're kind of irrelevant and like, you know, Essendon fans will hate saying that they're like irrelevant, but yeah, I just didn't have an eye on them. And then they perform really well through that mid season, mm. mid uh, season yeah. period. And um, yeah, it looked like they were going to go to finals and then yeah, the wheels really fell off. So I don't even know what Essendon fans would rate that season as. Uh, I was saying it was a success with about six rounds to go. And then by the time I got to the end, I was like, wow, they really fell off. But um, yeah, interesting to see where they go next year. Uh, and Brad Scott did set up for it. Um, mm. But yeah, then Geelong, it was like just a real slow start and it just cost them in the end because yep. those first, you know, three, four rounds or whatever it was, just to get up and going. Um, that's like what they missed the finals by. So every game counts nowadays. Yeah. You so realize that towards the pointy end of the season, that's for sure. But we'll get into the biggest news stories from the year. There's quite a few in here. We have a whole list of them. We're going to go through about five or six here because um, there's plenty to talk about throughout the whole year, as you can imagine. But AFL's biggest stories. Now, I want to start this off 
Big shout out. Big shout out to one of our favorite group of people that we will ever talk about and forever talk about on this podcast. Jeez. Old Tazzy. We oh, love yeah. Tasmania. Yeah. The old Tazzy team. What an interesting debacle that was with the the stadium, which I'm not even sure if it's getting built yet. Is there Yeah, I still don't know what the, still know what's, what's happening. happening. Yeah, yeah. There was the Gold Coast North Melbourne game that got f- under 5,000 people, I think, to it. Yeah. There was the whole Tazzy thing was just wild and it's going to be so interesting to see them come into the league and to have that I guess officially in stone was one of the massive massive headlines throughout the year it was one of those ones they like took two steps forward or a big step forward Mm. with the announcement and then it was like they had the protests and like all the negative stuff that came with it that they kind of weren't expecting I don't think Um, so yeah I still don't really even know where it sits they just kind of it feels like they've put it on the back burner just yeah, to be like, yeah, well, back. it'll come. But like, geez, we got to, you know, cross. Figure some, out what the name is first. Some eyes, Tazzy cross Tigers some is not going to probably get across the line. Getting sued for the name. It's like nothing oh, has been gosh, easy dude. with that that thing. You thought, oh, yeah, go down, set up a team. It's not that hard. We've done it, you know, 18 other times. Nope. Uh, so, <laughs> nope. Yeah, I reckon my craziest story for the year, if someone had said that Dimmer would be out of Richmond, Richmond mm. Uh, and be joining the Gold Coast Suns would have called you crazy. So yeah. that's a pretty – it's massive for the Gold Coast. And I, you always get this sense that AFL House is still like pulling strings and stuff running the Gold Coast because yeah. they obviously fund the whole thing up there. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, they're looking pretty good. And I don't know who these magical – academy players they have coming through their system, but mm. geez, they've already talked them up. So yeah, obviously Dimmer going up there wearing his uh Macca shirt. See his the Jewy Jew. McDonald's shirt just threw me. Yeah. First time I saw it, I was like, I don't even know how I feel about this. This is not this doesn't seem right. <laughs> but they I feel like they're at the point now where they should have been when they actually started. Like when they started it was a bunch of 17, 18 year old kids training out of a shipping container. Yeah out in a field in the middle of like the desert. And now it's, you know, they've got this elite facility. They got a premiership coach. They got, you know, a good leadership group there. They got a couple of academy kids coming through their new academy. Like they're, they're set up now how they should have been when they first started. Well, yeah, I think the difference in two teams, right? Look at GWS set up in a similar time period compared to Gold Coast and the successes that GWS has had playing in the grand final, being super competitive, making finals multiple times to Gold Coast, who's still yet to make the finals. So it's if you compare, you know, likenesses there, it's kind of like, oh, Gold Coast needs to kind of start performing. And I think Damien Hardwick is going to be a, a massive, a massive help to being able to make that a success. Yeah, and that's, I don't think either team was set up well on like a surface level because Ooh. you had GWS was uh, they had to get membership cards and trained out of a local like gym with the public <laughs> when they first started. But yeah, definitely like I feel like the the people were right and the and the like leaders they got through the club were yeah. crazy. Like even just starting off with like Cal Ward and stuff from the Bulldogs. Shane um, Mumford. Yeah, Shane Mumford. <laughs> the mummy. <laughs> uh, but what about what about another one? You got one? I've got another one. Buddy retiring. Absolute Big. goat of the IFL. We all know that. And a man who's kicked over a thousand goals. I'm happy to say this over and over again. The last person that will ever kick a thousand goals in the IFL. And a freak athlete that was just born to play the sport. Um, it's going to be weird not seeing him out there every single you know, year. I feel like he's almost like the LeBron James. People want to go see buddy before he retires you know go see him in the last game at the mcg or wherever it might be and he just brought crowds because he always was a spectacle every single time he took the field so yeah it was uh it was a bit somber i guess to say him finally say his last goodbye but uh pretty uh pretty excited for what's next in life for him i actually just watched a video that the afl put together every single one of buddy franklin's goals back to back to back to back to back to back it would have been a long video over three and a half hours wow <laughs> The <laughs> AFL has that much free time. Far out. Uh, it's a pretty good effort, I thought. Poor little tape deck person that's like getting all those together. Now, I, I've got this one because it was very recent but very costly. Yeah. Uh, ben Keys kicking the goal to win the game for oh. Adelaide but, you know, obviously disallowed, not reviewed, mm. uh, and – officially cost them a final spot, uh, a team that was on about 115%, so like a pretty potent team. And on their day, their footy was good enough to beat anyone. So I don't know, a lot of teams in finals, I think, dodged a bullet. Um, 
But yeah, obviously, well, you just say sorry and you get over it, don't you? Well, I'll just say karma's a bitch, Keys. Um, <laughs> but we'll move on to the next little chunk. Now, the last thing I'll talk about is the gather round. That's here to stay for at least another few years. Yeah, did you like it? Well, I didn't go because I was uh, bleeding internally. Oh, yeah, we watched it from the van. We watched it from the van, the old Adelaide game. But um, it was awesome. It was cool to see uh, the AFL all go to one place to help promote, um, you know, like the city of Adelaide. And I'm excited because not only that, but it has potential to go to other places also. Like I know for the next few years, it'll be in Adelaide. That was such a success in the way they put it together as a credit to them. But I think it'd be awesome to go do like the Northern Territory mm. or go up to like Queensland and do some like kind of more remote places. I know Melbourne plays Alice Springs. That would be awesome to go up there and do something like in that area just to kind of really show that part of the country because it is a beautiful spot that not many people go to as much. Um, and to have the AFL there to bring attention to it would be something phenomenal. Or you could take it to Tassie. Launch the new team with a gather round in right, Tassie. So anyway, we'll move on to the next thing. Sicily, uh, saying that Tassie sucks. That was yeah. wild. Rough. I was still looking back to that now thinking like a guy who's sponsored by Visit Tasmania, whoever it is, saying that, who's also the captain. It's like, why would you move there? Oh, jeez. <laughs> it was just wild. I'm going like, mate, read the room. But then Tasmania goes, we don't need you. We're going to get our own team anyway. So, yeah. well- We'll see how that goes. And then the last thing I want to say, which is a great great story, is record-breaking attendance and membership numbers. So everyone that's obviously following AFL probably listens to this podcast. Um, I don't know if you all realize how amazing it is to have the supporters out of games, to have membership numbers going through the roof. It means a ton to not only the players, but also the club and everyone else involved. So it's amazing to see AFL in such a, um, you know, a, a positive light, uh, being able to get such supporters there to games and everything else. It's it's something we don't take for granted, and we're very appreciative. So if you have a membership out there, you've gone to a game, wherever it is, just want to say a massive, massive thank you for being a part of that. Well said, Mason. I think I went to one or two. So yeah, I bought like free tickets from someone you know. Huh? <laughs> well, you, you got me. Yep. You, you needed a seat filler for your hundredth game. Not a lot of shows there, but uh, top five Collingwood moments. Mm. Now we got a deep dive into the Magpies season. But what was a bit of a shining light for you, Mace? Um, oh, geez. We'll start off with one of the beginning. I might be the beginning game. I think the the cat paws. Old Ollie it Henry. Was good. Getting tackled in the goal square from Darcy Moore. The old cat paws in the corner for me. There's a bit of lip, a bit of the chest from shirt fronting. There's there's a lot going on in that game, but oh, it was great. It was great entertainment. It was great entertainment. It was a really fun game to watch. Uh, and at that stage, no one knew what either team was going to achieve in the yeah. year. Everyone, you know, obviously Geelong coming off the grand final, Collingwood to get the win was like, oh, here we go. We're here. Mm. Uh, it was almost a changing of the the handing over of the baton, the way that it went after that. But, yeah, it was awesome from there. Yeah, I think Ash Johnson, Jez yeah. Cameron, like there was just moment after moment. It was an awesome game to watch. But, yeah, the cat claws that was like, was it or wasn't it cat claws? I don't think it was cat claws. Yours was. I don't even know nowadays. <laughs> I don't know what Ollie was doing. Anyway, but yeah, oh. I think it's been confirmed he was doing the I can't hear you to the crowd. Um, that was uh, mistranslated. Let's just say that to cat paws. I like it. I want to go with a bit of beef. I like the Ben Keys mm. goggle grab. Goggle snatcher. Um, it was, it was, you know, just a bit of spice. There's been a bit of spice in a fair few games that you've played this year, but that one was just, that one was, you could say that that wasn't your doing, which you can't nah. say that about many beefs that you well, get into. I mean, I, the, I the did start thing. the beef. I did start the beef at the beginning, which led to that. Uh, yeah. Don't get me started. Like, yeah, so I, I maybe was, you know, lit the fire to let it grow into a bonfire kind of thing. Um, but I, I found it funny because I didn't realize it was that big of a deal until after the game. Then people kind of like blew it up to be this massive ordeal. And he went out and had like a media statement and stuff. And I was just like, what in the world is going on? And he got asked in that media press conference if he shit his pants. <laughs> Which is weird. Like, what the f- what the hell are we doing? It's 2023. Um, wild. So uh, great to see the media is really <laughs> sticking up their standards. Um, that was interesting. That was, that was quite funny though. But uh, it's interesting to see how people's perception of me wearing the golf has changed since the day I started wearing them to that moment in the way people reacted to whenever someone did that. I think if the first day that happened, people would have laughed and made fun of me more and more and more. And then yeah, whenever true. that happened, people took a bit of a defensive stance against it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah there's a lot of like, you can't do that. Give him a fine. Like yeah. all of like defense, a lot of defense at the start. It was like, 
what are you wearing those stupid things for? What do you need to see? <laughs> yep. And then people are like, oh, medically. Great. Um, we'll go to the next one. Uh, wins over Adelaide. The first game was the one where Steele had the set shot and kicked the point, the, point, the yep. strategic point that strategic we will say that he did on purpose. Ash Johnson punched through the line for- Yeah. Yep. That was oh, such a great game. So many good moments. The other one I'll go with is the, another Adelaide, but Port Adelaide, the win in Adelaide against Port, obviously hyped up one versus two. Massive, massive game at two's home ground in Adelaide. And um, to be able to pip them over there in front of a massive uh, hostile crowd, as you would say. Uh, insane experience and just one of those you look back on is uh, being able to, I guess, perform under the pressure of uh, essentially finals-like atmosphere. I reckon that's win of the year, mm. a pretty hands down, because like the other ones, there's been close wins, but probably against teams that you probably expect were expected to beat. Port, it was like built up the whole week leading into it, maybe even a couple of weeks before it, like that it was coming, that game. And to get the win was massive yeah it's not the biggest there was a bit of disappointment around that game as well because obviously you were meant to dap kenny up and didn't yeah sorry there's still a chance still, still a chance, chance. <laughs> uh, we're holding out hope um but yeah and then obviously finishing on top of the ladder coming from 17th only a couple of years ago fly taking over and yeah, it's been a roller coaster, but mainly of ups. Do you allow yourself to celebrate that, or is it like lid on? We job's not done, all of that stuff, or do you give yourself a chance to go like, "Congrats, boys, well done, long season," and now we move on? Yeah, I don't think we really have. I don't think you really celebrate it because you almost go straight into finals. Like you kind of get in that finals mode. Like even obviously before we even played Essendon, we knew kind of we'd f- finish in that top four. So. Um, you kind of always looking to the next step. So you haven't like, I mean, winning minor premiers is not, you don't get a cup, you don't get anything for that. So we don't really, uh, it's great to finish first, but it's not what we're looking for, you know, like we're looking for something bigger and better. So I don't think we really celebrated it per se. I think we just said, you know, well done on the accomplishment of the year. It's obviously a, a credit to us being able to win so many games to be first on the ladder, but you know, let's do something special in September. So I don't think there's probably a, you know, looking back on the year and whatever happens, I don't think it'll be going Ooh, minor premiers. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> now let's get into this because I said last week that I wouldn't mind compiling the uh, penile phallus uh, oh, Jesus. 22, best 22 for the year. Obviously, yeah. both uh, genitalia last names, Cox and yeah. Cox. Uh, one's right, one's wrong. <laughs> The Mason Cox Show, Phallus, Team of the Year. It's a hard team to get into, Mace. Some limped oh, across the line, uh, but a whole bunch of boys came home strong. So let's jump into it because we got the back line, right? Uh, Brennan Cox, yeah. just a rock defender for Frio. <laughs> Aiden Bonner. This is so, yeah. We got Lucky Plowman. Plowman, yes. Isaac Cumming. Jeez, yeah. we got a good back That's line here. That's a great in. back line. Jake Sleever. Yeah, Jake Sleever, yeah. <laughs> and yeah, Blake Hardwick, right? So that's a pretty that's a pretty strong defense. There was a lot of good defenders in there. Strong, long lasting also. Could last four <laughs> they quarters. They go all day, Mace. Now we got the mids. So obviously yep. big Mason Cox in the rough. Cole face. Just <laughs> starting there. Then we got David Swallow, probably captain. Um <laughs> We got Riley Bonner. You know, you got to have the Bonner boys in yep. there. Uh, Mason Wood running up and down yes, the uh, Wood. the wings there. Not all boys show it. Some are Darcy Tucker. Yeah, tuck it back. Uh, and then Grower, you got not a shower. <laughs> then you got you got to have the young lad in there, Maddie Johnson from Frio. So a lot of Frio uh, boys yeah. in the team. Strong but Johnson. <laughs> they're good. Very strong. There. They get it done. Now we got the forward line. We got big Nicholas Cox because we got to have yeah. the Cox boys in there playing out of the square. Two Cox in the box, like we saw the other week. Cool. Uh, Nakaya Cockatoo. Yeah. Easy inclusion. Yeah, well, we got one Cox. Might as well have two. Then we had to have a little stretch, so we went Charlie Dixon, like Charlie. Big son. Yeah, okay. Yep. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a stretch. If, if yeah. You thought that was a stretch. What about Eric's hip wood? <laughs> He's got it. It's attached to his I've hip. I never thought of it like Where that. Where is it? And now I'll yeah, never be his, able to unsee that or unhear it. It's his hip wood. Then we got AJ, Ash Johnson. Yeah, another Johnson. That's good. Two Johnsons in the house. Then you got you can't That's have a, a forward too. line without Willie Rioli in there. So you gotta have Willie. Willie. Yep. You gotta have Willie in there. And then we ran a bit thin for the bench. <laughs> Jeez. These are some prospects for the future uh, Fellas team of the twenty two. Yep. So we got uh Shadu Brain. Shadu Brain. <laughs> He's a cat cat yeah, B yeah. rookie playing for Brisbane. Yeah. Uh Josh Weddle. Just got a little Weddle. Uh then we got 
<laughs> this one, <laughs> this one's my favorite, but it's probably the biggest stretch of the lot. Yeah. Because it just sounds like it. Jed Buslinger. Jed Buslinger. He's like a buslinger. Okay. It's so big, it's like a buslinger. Uh, and, Bus <laughs> and Oscar Foghead. Oscar Foghead. Are these all current players now? They're all current players. Really? See, I was going to do the best 22 of all time. Yeah. But you would have got pipped for the ruck with Dan Cox. So yeah, very good. Had to squeeze Cox. you in the team, so I did current uh, yeah, fellas it's players. It's squeeze two Cox in there, isn't it? Yeah, you got it. Yeah, there's, <laughs> there's only so much room. You can't just put all the Cox in there. Um, <laughs> so that's, that's where we're going with it. There were some other guys that oh, I could have gone around the fringes. Like you yeah. could have got like um, butts for Adelaide yeah. um, and steel side bottom and stuff like that. Yeah, but yeah. I had to keep it to – the phallus type stuff. Yeah, we're, it's probably more the front line and back line rather than the sides, you know. It's an exclusive it's, club. It's, you can't just – not everyone gets the enjoyment of having a, a, a phallus that, last night. That is an incredible phallus team of the century almost. <laughs> that's, yeah. Well, that's just team of the year, the inaugural oh, team of the yeah. year. We're going to have to do a phallus, phallus team of the century then. That <laughs> is a – the fact that you – Deep dive and took the time to figure out all the phallus names and all of the AFL was elite by you. Yeah, elite. well, we got to do the best of the Hall of Fame, Graham Johncock. Oh, maybe we'll do that for uh, Beyond the Valley. Who knows? That'll be maybe good. That'll be our intro to the Beyond the Valley. That'll be good. Phallus names of the century. We'll get all the lads out there for you. For, <laughs> get a few. We got to do a postseason trip with all the phallus boys. Oh my gosh! Anyway, that's the um, uh, team of the. Uh, that's that's elite. That's great by you. That's Thank great you. by you. Uh, we'll get into. Everyone's probably wondering what's going to happen this weekend, as, as myself. So we'll get into the preview of all the big games for the first round of finals, starting off with Carlton versus Sydney. Oh, wow, we. The old MCG is going to be a light with Carlton supporters here, there, and everywhere. Friday night, 7.50 at the G. Now, I want to break this down into what are you looking forward to because i tell you what I'm looking forward to uh, is actually seeing big Charlie Kerno and and the, the Carlton mids, but Charlie in particular, yep. on the big stage where he belongs. I think he'll, he'll thrive mm. under the, not like, pressure but the bright lights of finals yeah the crowd is just going to be peaking it's actually going to be scary the although they did leave early the crowd that rocked up to marvel to see him lose the other week was so loud early yeah. it was scary loud and that's at marvel this is uh something we haven't seen for a while so it's going to be very interesting and all eyes will be on them to kind of see how they go and with their current form there's um there's a fair chance they'll get the w over sydney but um sydney also as you know it's been playing pretty well, pretty well themselves so there's no talent. Uh, MCG, obviously home ground for Carlton. Uh, but, yeah, it's going to be a rocking, rocking place. There's no doubt about that. And Paddy Cripps has these, like, little rib injuries. Both teams mm. have taggers. There's always, from a fan's point of view, I mean, you want to see all the fittest players out there, but it always adds just a little bit of, like, mystery to each oh, matchup. Yeah. It was like when Stevie J did his knee going into the Geelong grand final and they had helicopters flying over training Jeez. and stuff just to see if he was out there. Like it definitely, everything's heightened this time of year. So, you know, it'll be interesting to see what the matchups are like. Um, but yeah, I think another thing just in general is just the Carlton fans finally getting to have another taste and <laughs> I mean, you'd hope for their sake that they see a win. I think, I mean, if I'm choosing the two, I'll probably go like Carlton beating the Swans in this one. And um, I know Sydney did beat Carlton early in the year at the SCG, but I think with their momentum, the way they're playing at the moment, they're definitely going to be a tough team to beat in finals. You just got to wait to see if they can stand up to it. Like, I haven't played it, obviously, but finals footy, I imagine, is different to Very regular different. season. So it's a lot more pressure out there. Oh, it's great, though. It's good fun. But, uh, you know, Michael Voss has been in plenty of finals in his life as a head coach of that team now. And uh, I'm sure he'll give him a bit of advice going into that game. But it is a different way to play as far as, you know, umpires, umpires, a bit different during the finals. Let it go a bit. They do let it go a little now, bit. I want to ask you because you're the footballer in the room. Mm. Yep. I mean, I did play that one Shut year up, for Tachira Bulldogs. Tachira was good. Um, how, wh where's this game won and lost? I'm interested to see who can handle pressure better. Um, now, Carlton's pressure is probably what got them to turn around their season, I think. Mm. Their ability to get pressure on the ball has um, been phenomenal over the last few weeks. And if Sydney can handle that and be able to expose them going the other way, they'll win this game. But if they can't, Carlton, I think, will just run over them. 
mm. it's going to be very tough for them to be able to to stop their midfielder go, midfield going through there. Uh, but I think pressure is going to be the one thing that's going to be that pressure gauge is going to be a, a hot topic for the uh, for the day. I thought the same thing. Both midfielders have so many like those contested ball nuggets. Yeah. Um, so whoever can get it to their forward line because obviously if it gets into Carlton's forward line more often than not, they're going to score. They got mm. Charlie up there. You got Paps. Paps a finals man. Yeah, he is a oh. finals man. Remember oh, the, last year he did the push in the back uh, in yeah, the prelim? Yeah, it's, it's, we've had a few of those in finals. You wouldn't <laughs> believe it. Um, now I want to get into who you're looking forward to the most and I want to take Charlie out of it. And I'll answer first because I know you have to rethink because it would have been Charlie. Everyone's looking forward to Charlie. Yeah. I'm going to say I'm going to take two as well. I'm going to go – <laughs> Goulden and Warner. Warner, last time we saw him out there, grand final, had like 30-odd kick three, was just trying to drag his team over the line. Yeah. Uh, couldn't get it done, but I think he's just, you know, big finals performer, still young ass. And uh, Errol Goulden, his season has been uh-huh. crazy. And no one's really – I don't know if they're not putting in the effort to try and stop him, but – he is having 35 and kicking two or three every week, just doing what he wants running down that wing. So they'll have to have some someone for that. But, yeah, they've they've all got – yeah, like I said, they've got taggers. So whether each team uses them, mm. uh, it would be interesting because Sydney do have two decent taggers and it's like you just send them to – Straight to Crips, Crip, Crips and Walsh or whatever yeah. and just say, good luck, fellas. I think that's probably what will happen, yeah. But time will tell. I've got um, the person I want to see play is Paps. Paps yeah. versus Kerner. That's going to be the big matchup, I think, of like forwards. Who's going to kick more goals on the night? Um, Paps is a pocket rocket, like I said. And he's a person that lights up the stage. So obviously he'll be going into a bit of uh, enemy territory and against uh, a crowd that's going to be heavily against him. So thrives he on thrives on that shit. He loves it, doesn't he? And I think that's like... It's the perfect storm for him to have a massive game and just go with a big bird to all the Carlton fans, like I know he probably <laughs> would. Uh, but yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting. It's it's the forward line versus the forward line in my mind. D- Jacob Weedering, obviously mm. massive for that back line for him. Uh, De Koning in the ruck gonna be massive. Pitney also um, gonna be interesting to see how the dynamic works against Sydney. Interesting game. All all of the games are like I think we got the per- perfect first week of finals. They they've all lined up really well. We'll jump into the St Kilda GWS Saturday afternoon three twenty at the MCG. Oh, obviously, not their home ground. Obviously not St Kilda's home ground because why would you put them at their home ground, Mace, against a team like GWS that are very unlikely to uh, have many supporters travel to make the game. So would you? like to see this at Marvel? If you were a Saints player, would you go give me a bigger stadium so we can pack it out or give us the ground that we always play on and we have a pretty good record at? If I'm St. Kilda, don't get me wrong, I love playing at the MCG. I think it's awesome. But if I'm a St. Kilda player it's most played most of our games there and could sell the Marvel Stadium out and have it a crazy loud crowd, purely St. Kilda fans, I'd, I'd probably be happy to play at Marvel. If that was the case, like I know, like us, we play the MCG every single week pretty much. So it's like that's our home ground that we have a feel for that. But a closed roof at Marvel, Rock and Play, St. Kilda, knowing the ground really well, playing there quite often, you'd almost prefer that. But I understand from ticket sales and everything else, like the club doesn't exist if they can't make a dollar. So they move it to the MCG. MCG, obviously, better atmosphere with more tickets sold and everything else. So I, I get it. I do understand it, but I think if you had the choice as a player or maybe as the coach, you'd be going, let's play to what we already know and what we know best and play at Marvel. But this is the this is the lay of land. And I think with finals, it's always going to be MCG because it's always going to be a bigger a bigger venue, bigger event. You know, you can pump it up more and it's uh it's more, I guess, seats to be able to fill. It'll be interesting. I don't think it's gonna have the same, you know, turnout as when Richmond played GWS in that prelim and they'd sold out 90% to Richmond, yeah. Richmond fans. But we'll see how it goes. There's a lot of, you know, quiet little Saints supporters that are just being quietly sobbing uh, in the shadows that will come out fi- first time in finals for a while. Uh, so tell us again, where's this one and lost? Um, oh, man, it's uh, St. Kilda's not a team that scores very much. So it's going to be essentially if GWS, Toby Green can get enough like points on the board to get over whatever St. Kilda's going to score. So if they can break that kind of, I guess, class they have on other teams right now that they defensively are doing, if they can break that and be able to get a decent score of 80-plus, I think they'll win this game. But if they get kind of held and suffocated by uh, St. Kilda's defense, then it's just not – it's going to be tough to beat them. 
Yeah, I feel like it's going to be an extremely low scoring game. Oh, yeah. Sam Taylor's that little bit of flavor that they add in that it's like if mm. Sam Taylor plays massive. If he can lock down Max King, tough for St. Kilda to be able to get enough points on oh, board. So, yeah. So, yeah, it's going to be interesting. I think GWS can get it done. I'm going to stick with them the whole way through. Yeah. If Sam Taylor plays, because it's it's just that massive, because then it frees up some other defenders to come off and, you know, run and gun and then get it into their forward line, which is really potent. We saw mm. Jesse Hogan kick nine or whatever the other wow. week. Uh, and then obviously Toby will just lift to another level come final. So, yeah, it's, I reckon it's such a good game. Who do you got winning? I'll go GWS, but I just think. You just <laughs> love the big, big sound from the west of the town, don't you? They've got just a little level like of class over St. Kilda. Like they got yeah, so many good, experience finals, so many yeah. good ball users. I can see it happening, but at the same time, Ross is, Ross just builds for this time of year. And like yeah. both teams are going to have so much pressure on the ball. It's going to be crazy to see. And it's just who breaks first. Yeah. Oh, it's going to be, it's going to be a heck of a contest. And like you said, it's going to be one inside and then whoever can finish, it might be, you know, it might come down to who can kick straighter. Yeah, to true. be honest. We're going to Brisbane versus Port up at the Gabba on Saturday night. An interesting thing about this is like the, the Port might have to stay over. I don't know if they're going down the private jet route or whatever, but uh, John O'Brown gave the AFL a bit of a lashing saying Ooh. that uh, if they have to stay over the night, how is that fair if they if Port do lose the game? Have Jonathan to- Brown going for the team that's playing his Brisbane Lions. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so All it's right. like he's, he's yep. defending yeah, yeah. the away team. So, um, yeah, it'll be very interesting. Have you ever been caught in that situation before having to like sleep away in a hotel bed an extra night? Never fun. No, it's never fun. But I mean, this is the thing, though. It's like seven twenty-five, trying to get back to Adelaide. There's Does it wreck no- your prep? Um, I, I don't really sleep too well after games, so kind of I'm always pretty wrecked. Like the day after, and it takes me a couple of days to probably get back into that sleeping pattern. What if I had to give you the choice? Mm. So you play the night game, you have to stay over, go home the next morning, or play during the day in Brisbane's heat. Play during the day, of Brisbane's heat. What if it's like 26, 27 it's and you're used to juicy little 16, 17s down here? <laughs> okay. If you want me to take the flight, I'll take the flight, Braden. Okay. Only if it's private. Oh, you, um, you are from Texas. Yeah, are from Texas. Um, what are you looking forward to in this one? Like this is a massive one in the middle, I feel like. Well, I really want to know if Port can just get it done with their midfielders. I feel like not many people are giving them a chance. Really? Yeah. Well, Brisbane in Brisbane. No, it's going to be tough to beat them. So Texas. hard to beat them. Port have, you know, had a bit of a form slump, uh, like towards the end of the home and away. They do have, you know, it's it comes down to Rosie, Butters, Horn Francis, even yeah. Power Pepper, uh, some of those guys that can just, ah, oh, they're just, like I think um, Butters won most courageous player. Yeah. Power Pepper's just a bull. Like finals time comes, I feel like they're built for it. Mm. But saying that, Brisbane's, you know, even Dunks should, like, mop it up. He loves this kind of contested ball stuff. So, yeah, very interesting. Uh, I hope it's tight. Um, <laughs> but who knows? I am looking most forward to Ken Hinckley's reaction if Huge. they win. If he wins that jig all time, it will be <laughs> unreal. Well, they won't be sleeping. He'll just be – I can see, uh, like, a. it doesn't matter. Then if you get the win, you could gone. fly back Wednesday. Um, but I see them – uh, at the hotel bar, uh, someone's playing. Someone's <laughs> playing piano. Ken Hinckley is on top of the piano, giving oh, it a good little wow. jig. They're all throwing five dollar notes at him. Can someone meme this up, please? It'll please, be, that would be unreal. It'll be great. What are you looking? <laughs> Surely for? AI can sort that out. Um, no, I'm looking forward to the Lear Alir versus Joey D matchup. Now they're going to have to stop two people. Obviously, we know Charlie Freak. Um, and then Joey D also up there. And not only that, they do kind of spread it sometimes throughout their uh, – Cam Rainer goes up there and kicks mm. a few goals and stuff too. So they're going to have to stop Brisbane from scoring. It's going to be the hardest thing. And they're a very, very potent team whenever it comes to their forward line. So I think that's going to be where the game's won and lost is whether or not they can hold them to a, a lower score than you know what they're used to. But who, if they're going to do that, Alir Alir has to essentially just dominate. So it's going to be a lot of eyes on him and what he can do as far as coming off Joey D, impacting in the air, and uh, seeing kind of what they can do on the uh, the other side, being able to run it down the other end. So we didn't even talk about uh, Lockie Neal and his terrible tattoo and his 
it just his form is just a little- I actually Neil's such a nice guy. I, I was just saying he's a terrible this. tattoo, but he's good footballer. He's, he's a good. great footballer. Brown low medalist. Human. Yeah, he is a Brownlow medalist too. You wouldn't believe it. Uh, but no, it's going to be a great midfield battle. And then I think that, that Brisbane forward line is where everyone's eyes are going to kind of go to and, and sort it out. And then um, Harris Andrews on the other side, Charlie Dixon. A little matchup there for you too. Very stacked with talent because mm. they've still got Wines and Boak. The, um, like we don't even mention them anymore because they got Butters and Rosie. Yeah, they got plenty of power there. They got plenty of power at the power. And now let's jump into... The biggest game of the weekend, Collingwood v course. Melbourne, Thursday night, 7.20 at the G. Big fan of Thursday night or would you prefer Friday? Um, oh, it doesn't bother me too much now. I think that we've had a week off. It's kind of like whatever day it falls on, it falls on because um, there's not really a, a short break or anymore because we got the weekend off. So Thursday night, bring it on. It's, uh, it's going to be a great one at 7.20 MCG. It will be a massive atmosphere. So you have mentioned your week off. What did you do in your week off? Do you just study game plan, study tape, in the gym, shift and tin? What are you doing? I went up to Sydney, went on the Today Show, actually. That was pretty fun. Oh, is this? Um, I saw a clip oh, of you bad. and a handshake with Carl. Carl. Carl did the whole, like, thanks for coming on and, like, had his hand out. And I was like, oh, okay, I guess he's going to handshake. And then he kind of went back to camera as he's reading the prompt. And I was like, yo, you this ain't, him this ain't happening. I was like, give me your effing hand and shook it. And I was like, this is not, I'm not being the Tony Jones of Australian football. <laughs> <laughs> so that was quite funny. It was a bit of a laugh, but uh, no, I enjoyed a bit of Sydney weather. I unfortunately got sick actually. So Again. I'm just kind of, I might be a bit nasally still, but um, yeah, just kind of getting through that. But now yeah, I'm excited for Thursday. Thursday is going to be, hey, it's going to be a hell of a time. It's going to be good fun. I'm surprised that you're sleeping because every time someone comes up against Melbourne, they look at the team sheet, big ruck for you, big ruck, Max gone. Yeah. Scary proposition. Yeah, it'll be a bit of a different look. Obviously, Max gone, Brody Grundy last time we played him. Um, and it'll be interesting to see kind of who they decide to be in their 22, I guess, this week or 23 um, with that decision in the middle. But yeah, Max gone, obviously incredible ruckman, has been for a long time. So uh, myself, Darcy Cameron, be uh, you know, have our hands full this week and hopefully can uh, do a bit of damage against him. But he is one of those people we're definitely aware of and what he's capable of. Now, I want to get into what I'm looking forward to in this game. Mm. Now, it's obviously seeing the big Mason Cox in finals again. What are you looking forward to getting into the game? Is it the lead up? Is it the actual game? Is it What's it like being out um, there in front of a hundred thousand? You nervous? Are you excited? I, I used to get quite a bit nervous, probably not as much anymore. We've been we've been playing in front of like seventy thousand plus every single week, so you're kind of almost used to it. But are you a spewer? Have you ever been a spewer? No, I'm not a spewer. No, probably. You know people that are spewers? At the other end, Brayden. To be honest with you, <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> Got a carb up before the game, my brother. Yeah, nice. um, but no, go, I think the one thing you look forward to, especially around finals, you do feel that energy. Mm. Like every big tackle, every big mark, every like everything seems to have that much more enthusiasm to it from the crowd. Um, and, you know, it's going to be amazing to have, and we hope there's an incredible amount of Collingwood supporters there because it's going to be a great game. And, um, yeah, I just feel like whenever you first go onto that ground, you you know, you come out of the tunnel and that big roar is just like a different kind of feeling than mm. probably season. So that's uh, that's one thing I'm definitely going to look forward to and, and you yeah, know, do the full 360 and see just one of those moments in your career that you're very fortunate to be a part of and, and really trying to soak it all in. Both teams really have a lot to change around in terms of people coming back from injury. Yeah, Melbourne have a lot of people <laughs> going out injured. They had uh, Bailey Fritch, obviously mm -hmm. hurt his foot, but still kicked five and looks sprightly. Is it how's he going to pull up after that game? Malksham sadly doing ACL. his ACL. They have to find a replacement. They got Brody Grundy. They got uh, Tom, Tom McDonald really well sitting in the, in the fellow, wings. Yep. So it's going to be one of those ones where they're going to hide a lot of their cards. Yep. I reckon in the lead up, uh, as will Collingwood. They got Darcy Moore, which I imagine is coming back in. Mm. Uh, and Nick Dacos have already said is not going to play. So it's- <laughs> As uh, much as they talk about it, yeah. but don't think it's going to happen. I don't know. It, it, miracles do happen, bro. Well, I saw him- I'm not going to say it's not going to happen. I okay? saw him running in a straight line and it was like, oof. Ooh, I reckon I got a chance to outrun him here for the first oh, time gosh. ever. Yeah. But yeah, there's there's a lot of little bits of movement and stuff. It's, oh, it's an exciting time of year. It That's, is very exciting. It's going to be a hell of a game. Good to get the D-more back, the captain. Um, he's obviously a big fixture in our back line. Hopefully can help us steady the ship a bit there. Um, and it's just, yeah, like I said, the atmosphere is going to be incredible. First game of the finals. Everyone's going to be, uh, all eyes are going to be on that. And 
just to be there, I think people are really kind of feel how exciting it really gets whenever it comes to finals. And you can look at both teams and just see players like all the way through the lineups that are built for finals. Like I want to mm. see Bobby get on a big run. Huge. I want to see Guinea get like up in people's faces. I want to see Braden Maynard just turn some oh, poor dude. soul inside out. Just can't wait for him to play. <laughs> can't wait to see him play. Like well, look, Braden Maynard in a home and away is a scary dude. Him oh, in finals is next level. next level. Love it. That's all stuff that I'm looking forward to. Uh, I guess you've been drilling it or you're going to be drilling it this week, but where do you think their biggest danger is? Where do I think Melbourne's biggest danger is? Um, yeah, their inside's really good. Clayton Oliver, Petrarca, uh, obviously the back line's really Viney. good. Lever, May, yeah, Viney in the middle. There's, I think it's just like they've got a lot of stars in there that um, you just kind of have to be able to to minimize their impact. So it's it's going to be, I guess they always say, it's going to be one in the middle and lost in the middle, wherever it is, you know, but um, that's going to be a m- big matchup for us. Uh, obviously, Max Gone will be a big matchup for the Rockmen. Um, and it's just going to be, I feel like there's just, you know, big matchups all around the ground. You got like mm. Braden, you got Darcy in the back line too, and then you got, um, you know, likes of Lever and May and, you know, you got Dan McStay and Brody Marchak and, you know, how they're going to handle that. And it's it's going to be so interesting just to be able to see all the different matchups and how it all kind of plays out. But, um, yeah, they're a potent team that's, you know, you know finished fourth on the ladder for a reason. Um, they've been playing really well as of recent. Mm. So it's, um, yeah, it's going to be a hell of a matchup. Yeah, and how do you like, Playing wet weather footy, you big fan? <laughs> Not a massive fan of it, but I think there is hail. I want to say there's hail, someone told me this morning, yeah. in the future. So I'm not sure what the AFL rules and regulations are, if there's golf ball size hail, but it'll be interesting to see what happens. Melbourne just putting it on as always. Just get a helmet, dust off the old helmet, run out there, no no dramas. No but, concussion um, protocols. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. To go is probably one that we didn't really mention, yeah. but he's going to, oh, he just goes to another level too. We we can just stay parked on this mm. game, but we got to get out of here because the game's coming up, mate. So you got to go rest, relax. Eat. What are you doing no, to recover? You're getting in. The, do you have a bathtub at home? I do have a bathtub. Yeah. So I feel like you could do like milk baths. Milk baths. Yeah, Madonna the hell is a does milk it. Bath. Madonna does it. It kept That's the fresh weird fantasy you have. No, we're just milk baths. It's not that weird. It's just normal stuff. Milk baths. You get in a bath full of milk. I've the, never heard those. Tenderizes the muscle. Tactic, okay. Like it's fine. Just uh, what else do you do? Do you have those pants that blow up? I do. I got recovery pants. I'll See, they're weird. The next few days, yeah. Big blow up pants. You know, spacesuit pants. I'll do some ice baths, some hot baths. And all do, you, do, you, and, do you ice bath at home? I uh, don't have an ice bath at home. Do you no. have one of those guns? The electric yeah, guns? Yeah, one of the, um, those guns. Yeah, the the vibrating guns. <laughs> I didn't want to say that because it sounds a bit weird, but I do have one a of those. Pocket rocket? Or, you sit under, underneath the bed? A what? <laughs> Just one of those massage guns. Oh, you, can stop, you, you keep making it everything weird. Oh, you went sexual. I was you like, oh, gosh. Weird. All right, well, we'll wrap up. I've got to get out of here and start prepping for the game on Thursday. But a massive, massive week ahead in the AFL world. And we're you need excited someone to, to practice handball drills with. i got a pretty good set of hands on me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just... Uh, Stop everything pretty weird. good set of hands for the uh, the what was it? The, what was the team of the century? The, oh yeah, the Fallas team. The Fallas team. Yeah, it, yeah. I hope y'all enjoyed that one. That yeah, if you one. enjoyed it, get around us. Uh, throw some names at me because I went through Tell every name we missed. So yeah, there's got to be someone that I missed out there. I mm. I probably didn't look through first names as much. I got Willie in there. Yeah. But, um, and then I think if people enjoyed it, I reckon we try to get a um, Fallas team of the century in. I think that's that's next. Dick Lee. Famous Collingwood player. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, of course, Dick Lee. Um, no, but everyone, thanks so much for listening. Incredible week ahead. It's going to be a great September, and I hope you all can follow along. We're going to have some special stuff going on on the podcast, as you can imagine. Uh, but thank you so much for listening in, and we will speak to you next week. Brad Dick, he played for Collingwood in the forward line. <laughs> now you're just making shit up. That's for real. Brad Dick. <laughs> yeah. All right, we're going to finish on that. Brad Dick. <laughs> hope Jeez. you're doing well, big fella. <laughs>